Hi, this is Dr. Nishal, and in this video we're going to be talking about Parkinson's disease and how to treat it naturally and effectively and how to target certain aspects of the illness that nobody talks about and nobody targets. And the main reason why nobody targets it is because there's no pharmaceutical intervention for it. So I'm going to discuss a few things that you can do to target this, um, this area in this area of um, the disease. Uh, and that would be the cellular metabolic processes that caused the disease in the first place and allow the disease to progress. And those cellular metabolic processes, firstly, mitochondrial function. That's the first one. Secondly, the process known as autophagy. These both seem to be dysregulated or dysfunctional in patients with Parkinson's disease. Uh, so how do we control these? Well, the first one I like to talk about is autophagy. How do we induce autophagy? Because it tends to be dysregulated and dysfunctional and deficient in some cases um, in conditions like Parkinson's disease. So how, how is it regulated? It's regulated by two hormones. Uh, the first one is insulin. That inhibits it. So that's a problem. The second one is glucagon, and that induces it. That's a good thing. So what you want to do is keep insulin down and up your glucagon levels as much as you can and as often as you can and the easiest ways to achieve this is through a ketogenic diet and through intermittent fasting intermittent fasting is basically where you don't eat for say um say you just eat between the hours of like 12 to 8 so you just eat for eight hours and the rest of the day you're not eating the morning you're not eating and then before bed you're not eating or you can eat within a six hour gap or a four hour gap, uh, whatever's best for you. Uh, and there's lots of videos out there on uh, intermittent fasting. There's tons of information out there, especially on the benefits. And uh, this process known as, known as autophagy will come up as well as hormones like the hormones insulin and glucagon. Uh, so that's the first thing, autophagy. Uh, a few other things to get uh, insulin down. Uh, firstly, you can uh, consume foods like amla. Amla is a fruit uh, known as Indian gooseberry and it's actually outperformed um, two pharmaceutical drugs in a study uh, for reducing blood sugar levels and if your blood sugar is down your insulin is going to be down. I'll see if I can find that study and post it in the description of this video. Uh, and uh, a few other things would be to get enough of the nutrients uh, specifically chromium, vanadium, potassium. These all play a very important role uh, in blood sugar, in the way insulin acts, the way it works, um, the way that it interacts with the cells and the insulin receptors and um, insulin sensitivity overall. Uh, so you can get uh, chromium and, and vanadium can both be found in foods like black pepper and uh, mushrooms. Uh, and you can google lists of foods that are rich in each of these and potassium you get from pretty much every uh, vegetable and fruit. And uh, so yeah, that, that covers glucagon and insulin for the purpose of the, the process of autophagy and, and intermittent fasting will up your glucagon levels. So uh, that's autophagy. The second thing is mitochondrial function. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It's the warehouse that manufactures what is known as ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And this is the energy currency of the body. And in Parkinson's patients, there tends to be a certain amount of dysfunction. Uh, in the mitochondria of those brain cells. So the way to improve mitochondrial function, and again, you need to do this under the proper supervision, all of this, the proper supervision of a qualified doctor. Um, I'm an Ayurvedic doctor, and that's why I'm going to be talking about Ayurvedic medicine in a minute. And all of these things to do with cellular metabolism are all Ayurvedic concepts. And, uh, and we have a wide range. In fact, in Ayurvedic medicine, there's an entire group of therapeutics that is, that is completely uh, uh, devoted to improving cellular metabolism. But that's for another uh, video. Uh, so for correcting mitochondrial function and improving it, you want to get um, CoQ10, coenzyme Q10. That boosts mitochondrial function. At the same time, you need to be getting enough trace minerals and, and the, the, the um, building blocks of ATP itself. But that's not as important as correcting the mitochondrial function. And that is done with coenzyme Q10. Speak to your doctor about this or speak to a naturopath or an Ayurvedic doctor or um, wherever you live in the world. Um, 
find somebody who is specialized in natural medicine and understands these things and how to incorporate them. Uh, so coenzyme Q10 can improve mitochondrial function. What else can improve mitochondrial function? There are medicines out there, Ayurvedic medicines like Shilajit, uh, which is seen to improve mitochondrial function. Uh, there's also things out there that can rebuild uh, new mitochondria. And uh, uh, again, uh, speak to a naturopath about this or an Ayurvedic doctor like myself. Uh, so that covers the area of mitochondrial function. The next thing that is important is neurogenesis. Neurogenesis is the way in which the brain regrows and uh, new neurons, brain cells are formed. Uh, and there's a few things that help with this. The number one thing is a herb, a uh, medicinal herb that you can buy at most health food stores and you can buy it online. It's known as ashwagandha. Uh, let's first talk about the experimental studies and then I'll talk about the human studies. In the experimental studies, ashwagandha is seen to in induce um, the the release of a chemical in the brain known as BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor, and that is responsible for brain growth. That's the first thing. Secondly, it's been shown to regrow entire neuron networks, and that, that is something that re is really needed in a condition that is neurodegenerative like Parkinson's. Uh, now, in human studies, we see the signs of improved brain function, improved memory, improved cognitive function, improved uh, uh, attention. Those are all the things that are seen in the human studies. And I'm going to post these studies uh, in the, um, the description of this video as well so that you can see that. So the studies, so the human studies support the experimental studies in that there is a improvement seen in brain function. Uh, how far it goes that's unknown at the moment. There's, remember, these things are still in the infancy as far as the research is concerned, but there is human research and it is strongly suggestive that these things improve brain function, regrow neurons, and can be very beneficial in conditions like this. Uh, the next thing I'd like to talk about is neuroinflammation. Now, neuroinflammation is the way in which the disease progresses. And uh, there's a few things that are known to inhibit neuroinflammation. They, they're showing um, a lot of promise in research, and that is um, curcumin, which is the key ingredient in turmeric, which is the East Indian spice. In fact, um, uh, East India, India is the country uh, that has such one of the lowest rates of dementia and neurodegenerative diseases in the world. Now, most people attribute this to the fact that people in India consume a lot of curcumin from the turmeric in their food. That's about 25% true. There's other things in their food as well that is known now to inhibit neuroinflammation, uh, and that would be ginger which contains gingerols and, and shogols. And uh, these are components, uh, chemicals uh, within ginger that specifically, I think it's 10 gingerol and six shogol. Those are the specific ones that are seen to inhibit neuroinflammation. And as it's well known, ginger is a anti-inflammatory. Uh, the other thing is cinnamon. Cinnamon contains a chemical known as cinnamon, cinnamaldehyde. And cinnamaldehyde is also seen to reduce neuroinflammation. And I'll post all of these studies in the uh, in the description. I'll, I, I gotta find them and I'll put them in there so that you can take a look at it and see for yourself um, how promising this looks. So we've got three things, curcumin from turmeric, ginger, cinnamon to reduce neuroinflammation. Uh, now again, uh, you, need, you need to find ways to bring this into your diet daily. Uh, so I would recommend looking at uh, recipes for foods from that part of the world, from East India. Uh, and a lot of them will con contain a lot of these ingredients, a large amount of them too. Uh, also, there's specific ways to take some of these things. For example, curcumin has low bioavailability. So to increase the bioavailability, you must take it with black pepper, which contains alkaloid known as piperin. Uh, you can also use long pepper, which in my opinion is better. It's not strongly... Uh, used, I mean, it's not um, commonly used in uh, culinary, for culinary purposes, but it's used for medical purposes, and uh, it goes by the trade name of Pipali, P-I-P-B-A-L-I, -I. and uh, uh, this contains piperin as well and can enhance bioavailability of uh, 
pretty much any nutrient. So uh, that's neuroinflammation. Now, one of the biggest topics in Parkinson's disease is L-dopa, dopamine. There's a richest source of dopamine uh, that, that's available that's actually suggestive, the, the research has suggested that it's actually better than the pharmaceutical L-dopa that most Parkinson's patients are on. Uh, and this source is known as Macuna prurians. Final thing that I'd like to talk about is diet for Parkinson's. The brain is made up of about 60%, I think it is, 60 or 70%, uh, maybe a little bit more than that, fatty acids. Fat, it's made up of the, the, the nutrient that we call fat. So in order to give the brain the building blocks to rebuild itself, you need to give it fats, dietary fats. Now I spoke about a ketogenic diet in the beginning. And a ketogenic diet is predominantly dietary fats. Now, if you're concerned uh, that consuming dietary fats is going to make you gain weight, the success that is seen with, uh, at least the results that are seen with the ketogenic diet, is a su significant reduction in weight. In fact, the thing that causes you to gain weight is insulin. And insulin is triggered by carbohydrates and large amounts of protein. So, uh, the way to, to really lose weight. Um, or at least prevent weight gain from a high-fat diet is to avoid carbohydrates and sugar. Uh, also, there's many other things that can cause you to gain weight. Uh, fatty liver, hypothyroidism, polycystic ovarian syndrome. There's many conditions, certain tumors in certain parts of the, the, the brain, etc. Uh, so yeah, when it comes to the brain, the main nutrients you need is fats, dietary fats. So I'm talking about avocados, coconut oil, Ghee, ghee is one of the best sources. Um, fish, uh, fish that is rich in fat, they got lots of omega 3s. Nuts like almonds, Brazil nuts, walnuts. Uh, in fact, walnuts is great for um, neurochemistry because it contains actual melatonin and uh, tryptophan, which is metabolized and converted into serotonin. And so, uh, uh, getting getting these things into your diet is very important. Getting lots of B vitamins, getting lots of amino acids because dopamine is actually made from tyrosine and phenylalanine. Phenylalanine is one of the amino acids that gets converted into tyrosine. I may be mixing that up, but I don't think I am. Uh, and then tyrosine, there, there's a bit of a process that it becomes L-dopa and then do L-dopa becomes dopamine. And so uh, getting those nutrients, B vitamins, amino acids, and as far as the brain function is concerned, magnesium is something that everyone is, is, seems to be deficient in, in my experience. Uh, so it's another thing that is very important and you should look into as well, and um, dark chocolate contains magnesium. Dark chocolate is great for the brain as well. Uh, it also contains fats, uh, and uh, avocado contains magnesium, and these are all the things that you need to look at. Now, I did an article on my website uh, where I spoke about Parkinson's disease and uh, I spoke about diets, I spoke about some of the herbs, medicinal plants, supplements that are used for neurogenesis. I'll try to put a lot more information on there, uh, but you can get get a lot of information about this illness on my website, drnishal.com, D-O-C-T-O-R-N-I-S-H-A-L.com. Anyways, that was my take on Parkinson's and just a few things I'd like to share with you. Now, if you'd like to get in touch with me, uh, you can do so through my website, docsinishal.com, which I just mentioned. Uh, I do online consultations to people all over the world. And uh, you can come and see me at, at uh, the Wellness Center where I work at. And that is located in Baton Rouge and the information is on my website. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.